Local 7 and 103.7 WTIB present Talk of the Town with Henry Hinton. News, sports, and community information and everything that's going on around town. Now, with Talk of the Town, here's your host, Henry Hinton. Welcome back to this Friday, September 18th, Talk of the Town. I'm Michael Overton along with my co-host Terry Williams. Just a quick look at the weather. Isolated showers after 2 p.m. today with patchy fog before 9 a.m. Otherwise, mostly sunny with a high near 83 and a low of 63 tonight. Saturday, mostly sunny with a high near 86, low of 65 tomorrow night. Sunday is looking beautiful, high of 87. And uh, Sunday night, partly cloudy with a low of 64. And Monday is going to be awesome, partly sunny with a high near 83. Terry, we've had an, a yeah. fun first hour. So yes, we have. The second hour here. Lots of fun. We have Bianca Shoneman with Uptown Greenville. Bianca, thank you for coming. Well, hello, show. mateys. Hello. Today <laughs> here we go. Not talk like a pirate day. Darn She's it. getting started early. <laughs> but in case you're tuning in, we are live at Krispy Kreme. Get down here. The hot light is on. And so what Bianca just did is to give you a preview of tomorrow. Starting at uh, midnight tonight, running right. all day tomorrow. You talk like a pirate. You get a free glazed donut. You have to come in here now and talk you like a pirate. Come in and talk like a pirate. <laughs> come inside. Uh, so Bianca, I'm sorry you're not getting no one free now, donut? But uh. if you get up quick as soon as you leave, grab the one in front of us and haul tail out the door. <laughs> yeah, I think look at these donuts. That Amanda's They're beautiful. Know it, and so you're probably okay. Or you come t- uh, also tomorrow. You can get a dozen donuts if you dress like a pirate. But you got to wear at least three items to dress like a pirate. Now, what time so are you showing up so we can send everybody? I'm not dressed like a pirate. <laughs> oh, wait. Can you repeat that, Michael? So you're saying if I wear three items, like an eye patch, a bandana, and bring in a sword, that they're going to give yes. me a dozen donuts? Dozen no weapons. Free? No free. weapons. Oh, no weapons. <laughs> no weapons. Okay. Can't bring your sword. So Leather knickers, belt, I knickers, need some knickers, 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 peg leg, bandana, pirate, pirate hook. head, I love peg legs. Qualifies. I would love good. to see the peg leg. <laughs> peg legs should be actually worth two dozen if you walk in on the peg leg. Okay. But I, I don't know if we'll get to that. But again, thank you for coming on, Bianca. We we did talk before the top of the hour, and uh, you already cracked with me. Said you've already said everything. But <laughs> I'm sure we haven't said everything. We said. There's a lot going on uptown Greenville, so let's let's get into it. We are so excited about um, the private investment that's happening in our central business district, Uptown Greenville. In the last, I'd say, six months, we've really seen a focus on the Dickinson Avenue corridor area of the central business district. And that's in large part in response to the municipality's initial effort to fund the study that's Mm -hmm. known as the Dickinson Avenue corridor study, which looked at a small quadrant of the Dickinson Avenue corridor in response to the impact that would be bestowed upon that area um, in light of the construction of the 10th Street Corridor pro- Project. Right. And so uh, Barbara Lipscomb, our city manager, took the initiative to look at those impacts and really begin to strategize on how we can inspire private investment mm-hmm. in that particular corridor and what types of strategies would further implement the goals of the municipality to be you know, a strong central business district with very productive land. And by productive land, I mean land that produces tax revenue mm-hmm. that supports great city services like parks and recreation, Mm -hmm. uh, police and fire and of course infrastructure Um, and in response to Barbara's uh, study the Dickinson Avenue corridor study we've been able to attract some very high quality uh, private investors the sidewalk development team coming out of Charleston and Baltimore and just recently they made an announcement uh, for our municipality's first market rate apartments in our central business district uh, which is just a phenomenal Movement. I put it on uh, LinkedIn the other day, and all across the state, I got responses from our downtown mm-hmm. development professionals that once you start getting market rate, you're really on the on you know, you're right. rocking and rolling in downtown development. So I couldn't exactly. be prouder and more thankful that the st- the city had the initiative to do the study, mm-hmm. and that we've been able to attract a national level investor to pull this project off. Yeah, and we also mentioned businesses and restaurants, brewery. Can you elaborate on that exactly? Absolutely. When will, when will they be opened and ready to go? <laughs> Everybody's <laughs> asking that question. When is the pub right. house going to open? <laughs> so the Dickinson Avenue Pub House is a collaborative endeavor between four um, longstanding pirates, uh, <laughs> Christy Southard, Brad Hufford, uh, Jacob Wilson, and of course, the Tandy Mont, who is the uh, proprietor of Christie's Euro Pub. Right. And they plan to open uh, Greenville's first gastro pub, mm-hmm. um, 
along the Dickinson Avenue corridor um, in in the very near future. Now they're doing soft openings mm -hmm. for the next month or so. Okay. Um, so they'll have small groups that are be welcome to come in, and then they'll take a couple of people um, from off the streets that if you want to, if you just happen to be in the neighborhood and you'd like to try it out, you you might be able to get in. Okay. Uh, but a formal opening, open always, will be will happen towards the latter part mm -hmm. of October. Okay, that's well, I've really seen exciting. Some of the initial pictures that Tandy showed me of the inside and yes. seeing some of the original. <laughs> murals on the walls so one of the murals i can't even believe was there it would have been like faux pas 100. <laughs> today it's faux pas 100 years ago i cannot imagine i know with right? uh, yeah. the little uh the demon Satan. or whatever I'm like, oh my god i can't believe that's 100 years old but they found those behind the walls that's and right. saved them so it's a really cool environment and uh, I'm excited. How about the brewery? Any updates on that? You know, I, I knew that the brewery um, was moving along. I've seen some updates where they are building in their bar right now. I think they're falling right behind the Dab mm -hmm. House, and I wouldn't be surprised if we saw an opening simultaneously. Mm -hmm. That's great. I know that their menus are going to collaborate a little bit. Uh, they'll have um, a, a brew menu where some of the uh, beers will be featured in some of the menu items, which is very exciting to see that collaboration between two mm -hmm. independent businesses, but looking to feed off of each other's clientele. Well, and if you haven't been down there I mean I know we're not we're gonna leave someone out but uh, restaurant wise there's a lot of restaurants downtown you got Starlight Cafe which my wife and I love to go and eat there yes. at night um, wonderful dinner menu the scullery is is just a man Matt has done just a great job yes, and you know I think a little hidden gem too that we don't talk about a lot is Crossbone Tavern I was, I was about to mention they this. have Their the food best is burgers and yes. that patio that they have with the twinkle lights above it right. really does set an atmosphere for just it, it inspires fun you know when what, I go uh, there he, I feel he set his atmosphere when I sat down and they gave me pork rind uh, no. <laughs> for appetizer <laughs> with sweet day. baby raised <laughs> barbecue sauce I was like ooh I like this I'm place. concerned about you Michael with the, between the pork rinds and the donuts. Had, had the donut <laughs> we <got problems>. <laughs> <laughs> We have to talk about this. <laughs> but there, you're right. I had the pimento cheeseburger there. Oh my oh, gosh. Oh well, that sounds good. It is absolutely fantastic. And if you're not feeling so decadent, the other day I had the grilled shrimp wrap, which was spicy and delicious, and still on the lighter well, side. So I mean, I know you got five and one fresh down there. Yes. Um, we maybe the throw new crave is there one new called crave is so fantastic. good. There, oh, you had that is such a faux pas, both of you. <laughs> Redevelopment commission members and planning board. <laughs> members you should go we'll to get down there. They, sorry board of adjustment right more whoops you're right you're live on the radio but uh, it's all right. and, uh, we'll you know, get another there. one I go to is not really technically uptown, but Christie's Europub. Christie's Europub. We embrace them on our Eat Up Guide map, and mm -hmm. yes, right. they make some really good food. Uh, you know, there's cinnamons. <laughs> if you're looking for da um, you know, cinnamon, which is the former Dales, that's and that's right. Indian cuisine, mm -hmm. Thai 360 Marathon Restaurant. There's uh, Campus Cookies, Michelangelo's Pizza, Insomnia Cookies, Insomnia is coming. Cookies, Cabana, is coming. Didn't Cabana. Cabana. If you're yeah, looking for whatever. tacos, oh. Chicos, Mike Jimmy Angelo's. John's, Sup Dogs, Sup Dogs. Oh. There's so much. I mean, Choose from yeah. now. It's 26 wonderful. restaurants. Oh, this is downtown. Yeah, 26 restaurants. So get out, and park you got your a car. Parking deck, two parking cars. Park your car in the right. deck, go to one of the 26 restaurants, enjoy some of the phenomenal retail that we have in the uptown district. Our downtown is booming. We have tons of galleries that are staying open late at night, especially on our first Friday nights. So it, it is the epicenter of culture and food for our municipality. Well, and, and a very, we get, there has been criticism from some residents that we talk too much about uptown, but. A central business district is absolutely it essential is. Is. for a strong municipality to it have. It is. It is the heart of the city. And and it's not just that, but it's, it's the, the tax revenue per acre, what it can produce and what it can mean for a city. And for people coming to, to the ECU games that haven't been here since last year, right. coming into town, driving downtown, I cannot wait for them to come next year. I know. I feel exactly the same way. <laughs> well, are you still thing? providing rides from uptown to the games and back? Yes, Terry, yes. we are. So um, every home football game, even Thursday games, mm -hmm. we are providing a free shuttle from the Central Business District over to Dowdy Ficklin. It stops okay. at Sup Dogs and it stops at Five Point Plaza. It's running on a 20-minute circular okay. loop. So every 20 minutes, you're guaranteed to get a ride three hours before, all throughout the game, and two hours after. That's awesome. And, yep. uh, and free parking uptown. We've mm -hmm. got, obviously, tomorrow we're, we're playing at Navy, but I believe next weekend Virginia Tech is coming to Greenville. Yes, they are. We so you're going to have a pumped. huge event Friday night. Talk about Free Boot Friday. Yes, Free Boot Friday is going to be amazing. Um, the Pirate Club is bringing in all of their members, mm -hmm. and so we're having Pirate Club Free Boot Friday. With their sponsorship, we're able to sort of bump up the quality of music, mm -hmm. and so we've hired a Stevie Wonder tribute band, oh, wow. and they are <laughs> awesome. <laughs> They're called Natural Wonder. 
And uh, of cool course, name. GUC will be uh-huh. there, and they'll have their bucket trucks. So if you haven't been up in the bucket trucks, they take you 110 I feet know. up. And that is one of the best views mm. of our city. You can see the river, you can see the town common, you can right. see the street. It's a great city view city. as long as you're okay with heights. I don't like them all. <laughs> well, they put you in a harness and you are with a lineman. So Tony Cannon keeps it safe. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, and uh, one other thing is uh, farmer's market. Talk yes. about that. We had a very successful um, uh, umbrella market this season. We were at capacity nearly for mm-hmm. every, every market. We did 15 markets this year. The umbrella <laughs> market hosted about 70 vendors per event. Wow, that's Cool. Yeah, we're considering a Saturday event, um, mm-hmm. looking at bringing the market. Um, is that still going on or is that ended? No, it, it just ended actually. Okay. It did just end, but we will have a farm tour. I think it's the weekend of October 10th where you'll be able to visit some of the farms that participate in the umbrella market. And so you did that last year. This will be the did. second year. Yeah. That's right. That's so exciting. So people to find out about all of this, where do they go? The most resourceful um, place is uptowngreenville.com. Our website is powered by Faulkner and Associates, and it is mm-hmm. one of the top notch websites in town. <laughs> By a top notch firm. <laughs> yeah. That's well, I think right. Terry's a great time to take our, our next break. We'll Sounds come good. back and we're going to have Mike Broadwell with Greenville Police Department on. So, again, live at Krispy Kreme. Get over here, join us, get a hot donut, and uh, we'll be back in a couple minutes. Welcome back to uh, this September, sep- September 18th, Team. Talk of the Town. Talk of the Town. Live on location at Krispy Kreme. Terry mm-hmm. Williams, my co host. Terry. It's been a fun morning. Yeah. It has been a lot of fun. Great. Uh-huh. We have Bianca Shoneman on, John Ross with Maine Pharma. And right now we have Mike Broadwell on with the Greenville Police Department. Mike, I wrote your title down there, Sergeant with Community Outreach Vision. You want to find Mike? You can find him at a donut shop, That's Greenville right. Police Department. Man, it's good to see you. Thanks. I know you've been trying to get me to eat donuts. He said he didn't need any donuts I'm yet. I'm refusing to do it right now. We'll do it later. Though. There you go. Mike's a good friend of mine. I can pick on him. But uh, it is Talk Like a Pirate Day, and uh, tomorrow, not today, but starts at midnight tonight. Talk like a pirate through anytime. tomorrow night through, through Saturday tomorrow, night, and uh, you get a free donut if you dress like a pirate. You get a free dozen. But again, live on Crispy Green, get down here, support a local business, and just come see us. But Mike, you wanted to talk about the Citizens Police Academy coming up on September 29th. So uh, tell us what we have here. Yes, yeah, September 29th, we've got our Fall Citizens Police Academy. Mm-hmm. It's open to the public. Anybody in our local area is welcome to come. And uh, what we do is we just go through. Uh, what our police department does, Mm -hmm. our philosophy, and we take you through a bunch of different um, sections of our police department I'll go over in just a second. And uh, this this coming academy, we're going to have a new chief in. All right. So we're going to be welcoming uh, Chief Holtzman. He's uh, brand new. He'll be starting Monday with the city of Greenville. And uh, he's from Hagerstown, Maryland. Okay. So he should, uh, he'll be there the first night of the Citizen Academy also. Oh, that's great. And it's like a 10-week class or something like that? How long is the academy last that's correct it's gonna be 10 weeks it's right. every tuesday night starting on the 29th okay so we meet at 6 p.m till 7 30 okay and uh we we feed you also so i'll give you okay. a little bit of food wow. to keep you hanging around <laughs> and uh so we'll do it 10 weeks in a row the last week will be the week of thanksgiving we'll have graduation that night okay that's very exciting so there are different topics will be covered every week you said there is we've okay. uh, i've kind of uh modified the the curriculum a little bit mm-hmm. we uh in the past, we've kind of had, we've had some pretty standardized uh, groups of presenters, but we wanted to put a little more hands-on spin to it. Okay. So uh, in the spring, we switched it up a little bit. So each week, you're going to have a different topic area, and you're going to have the experts from that field coming in and telling you about it. And just a few of the examples is uh, one week will be our special operations, um, including uh, gang um our, some of our ERT mm-hmm. members teaching you about uh, the SWAT team. That's what we call our SWAT team here in okay. Greenville is our emergency response team. We're going to have uh, a night where investigations, our forensics unit comes in and teaches you all about the CSI stuff like oh, you wow. see on TV. They <laughs> get to tell you. They teach you real life and, uh, and you know, what, what they really do. Um, we'll have a night with, with our canines in there, so you'll get to meet our canines. They've been getting a lot of publicity mm-hmm. lately. They're doing good work, so yes. you'll get to see them, meet them, and see how they work. Um, We've added a, uh, we call it response to resistance, or basically any use of force training Mm -hmm. that we do. And so we're actually going to teach you about use of force, how we use it, how we don't use it, uh, dispel any myths about it, Mm -hmm. and then we're actually going to put you through a hands-on scenario, don't uh, shoot, don't shoot training. So you're going to strap on a gun belt. You're not going to wear the don't shoot shirt. Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) But uh, we're we're really going to have a bad guy in there, and you got to uh, go in as a police officer and handle that situation. Oh, wow. Um, we're going to have uh, 
a traffic safety unit, so mm -hmm. we're going to take you out to the driving range and actually let you drive a patrol car. So oh, that'd be pretty I neat. Do that. So you'll get to ride with an officer and <laughs> some of the new ones with the high speed. Oh yeah, of course <laughs> they'll fly. And, uh, no, you don't get to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and so you'll get to actually try some of our cone courses that the um, the cadets have to go through uh -huh. and the officers have okay. to go through. And uh, so we got a we got a big a big academy ready. Yeah. How how many participants do you normally have in a a session? I normally aim for about 15. Okay. Um, right now, it's kind of been overwhelming, so we're mm -hmm. already at 20, and I'm wow. still getting emails right now, so I don't know where we're going to be. Uh -huh. So you really don't want to tell people how to email you to <laughs> add to it? No, I'm not going to turn anybody down. Uh, if you would like to, to be involved in the Citizens Academy, uh, there's a couple ways you can do it. One, you can just give me a call, and my number is 252-329-4339. You can also email me at mbroadwell at greenvillenc.gov, or you can just go to the City of Greenville website, go mm -hmm. under Police, Community Policing, and there'll be a link right there you can sign up for the Citizens Academy. Okay, that's really interesting. Well, Mike, I think uh, obviously you, you know the, the police nationwide have been taking a beating for the last year. I, I, I appreciate the involvement in our community that the Greenville Police Department, you know, starting with Chief Aiden, has taken to build relationships, positive relationships throughout our community. You know, what, where do you see us going from here with the new chief coming in? Do you see that continuing or do you see any big changes coming your way? Yeah, absolutely. As far as big changes, I don't know what's on his agenda, but mm -hmm. uh, I anticipate that it's going to be business as usual. We're going to mm -hmm. continue with the uh, outreach that we're doing, the positive uh, community reactions that we're having. Right. And uh, I don't see any major changes. Um, but, you know, the chief could come in with some fresh new ideas, and right. we're hoping so. Right. That sounds really good. We thank you for sharing the Academy. I read about it in the paper, and yeah. it, it's, Thanks for it's having just me. really, really awesome. It's a lot of fun. You yeah. should come. Well, if you know. definitely <laughs> want to know, and, and again, that gives an opportunity for you to get to know your, your local police department and individuals within that. It would be a good opportunity for them to get in there and build relationships. That's right. So That's what it's all about. Hosting. Uh, well, Let's talk about Suddenlink. Okay. You know, I tell you, I've got Suddenlink in my home, Suddenlink right, in my we office, do too. and um, I, I had made the switch. So if you haven't made the switch and and you want to take the speed test challenge, you need to check out Suddenlink. Uh, so really, it comes down to how important your access is. That's right. If you like slow dial-up speeds, even though it's not called dial-up, not anymore. You can stay with your current <laughs> carrier or look at going to Suddenlink and get something a, a little bit faster. I mean, I know at my house, uh, I've got two kids, a wife, and myself, and all on the internet at the That's same right. time and everything's fine in my or office all nine got tvs or <laughs> eight people in my office on there That's all right. at the same time and never any speed issues so you definitely need to look at that so it really comes down to how many uh, slow dsl internet downloads you want to endure before you take that sudden link speed test challenge if you want to do it go to speedtest.suddenlink.com today if you're a centurylink customer don't spend any more money for slow internet when you could switch to sudden link and get the fastest internet in town uh, they've also made some channel changes on TV to provide uh, new and improved options. So the power is in your hands during the more power switch event from Suddenlink. Now is the time to make the switch to Suddenlink TV and Internet. Call them at 1-866-432-1184 today and uh, to get your HD TV and Internet for just $69 a month. That's really good. That is cheap. Yeah. Plus, you'll get access to On Demand. Don't wait. Again, 1-866-432-1184 today. Visit suddenlink.com for more information. Mm -hmm. um, Terry, and they've extended their hours, too, I believe. Yeah. During the week, I think they're open until 7 now. So Well, I, look, I'm a huge proponent. I do have them at, right. at home and at my office. Mm -hmm. uh, we had them at my previous office. Their, their speed right. is the best, the best by far. And they actually have uh, services as low as 50 meg up to 1 gigabyte. Wow. I had the other company for one day at my house, <laughs> and my download speeds were like uh, 8 Wow. And so the next day I switched to Suddenlink and I had 55 to 60. That's great. So good it was tes tremendous. Good and testimony. it was cheaper. <laughs> and it was cheaper at that. Yeah. So we're going to go ahead and take our uh, bottom of the hour commercial break. We're going to come back and uh, wrap our show up for the last 30 minutes. So thank you for joining us. Again, we're live at Krispy Kreme on location. Get down here. You got the hot light on, hot donuts rolling off the line until 10 o'clock a.m. And That's when right. we come back, we're going to get Amanda Tilly back on. To uh, give Describe us a little, these beautiful boxes. Oh, of donuts. yeah, she's got the pirate donut going on. She's got the, I can't see them all terrible. Football. There's a football. Football, caramel. Patch. Oh, man. It's just bad Too stuff good. for me. <laughs> bad stuff. <laughs> we're going to take our break, come back. We'll have Amanda Tilly on, and then we're going to get into talking about local football. So we'll be back in a couple minutes. 
Welcome back to the uh, Talk of the Town. I almost said Greenville Grit. It almost came out. <laughs> Greenville Grit. I'm Michael Overton along with uh, Terry Williams, my Greenville Grit co-host. That's but right. Henry, uh, out of desperation, <laughs> called us This might be our today. last show. Yeah, he's, yeah he, he, we're not coming back. So, good to see you today, <laughs> man. I'll probably never see you again. <laughs> I think but, you guys are doing a great uh, job. Got Amanda Tilly sitting beside me, proprietor for Krispy Kreme Donuts. That's right. The light is still on. It we are live on. on location. Get down here if you have not had a chance. But the reason you're sitting beside me is to talk about tomorrow, starting midnight tonight. Midnight tonight. It is Talk mid- Like a Pirate talk Day. Talk Like a Pirate Day. This is, I think, our fourth year celebrating. But when you come in tomorrow, if you talk like a pirate, you're going to get a free glazed donut. If you come in dressed like a pirate, you can get a free glazed dozen. Wow. Now, you've got some interesting donuts know, sitting in beautiful. front of me. Fortunately, I cannot see them, <laughs> or else I wouldn't be talking. I'd be eating. But tell us about some of the donuts you've got. Sure. We've got our fall flavor donuts, our pumpkin spice, which is a That's my wife's favorite. Yeah, annual really favorite. It, it's here um, and will be here through Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, and then the other donut is a new one for us this year. It's a salted caramel latte donut. Oh, uh, and it is, it, it is fabulous. <laughs> um, so encourage you to try that one. And then we have our pirate donuts. Right. Uh, which we have had um, running for several weeks now in promotion of Pirate Day tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And after tomorrow, we'll have pirates on home game weekends. We'll have pirate donuts and purple footballs uh, for home games. Are they cream puffs or just donuts? They're cream puffs. Okay. That's and and we've got just our, our plain <laughs> footballs in the box today. Yeah, so there are pa- eye patches and footballs and all sorts of designs in there. Really yep. pretty. Yeah. So tomorrow is uh, Talk Like a Pirate again. It starts midnight tonight, runs all the way through tomorrow night. You talk like a pirate, you get one glaze. But I'm going to challenge you. Come in here dressed like a pirate. That's right. You get a free dozen. You can come in uh, with any of the three or more following an eye patch, a pirate hat. And that does not mean an ECU hat. It has to be a pirate, pirate. hat. <laughs> a bandana, a peg leg, a parrot on the shoulder, pirate to- shirt, parrot. not an ECU <laughs> shirt, a pirate shirt, knickers, leather belt, silver and gold necklaces, pirate hook, or pointy black boots or ragged brown sandals. There you go. Anything there else you, you want to add to this? Just, just, just to add um, from a part day, there, we have an app. If you go to Krispy Kreme forward slash our phone, like oh, ARR wow, cool. phone. <laughs> um, y- th- th- there are s- it, some instructional videos, some videos you can share with friends to get your crew together to come in. It'll develop your pirate name if you would like to know oh, what your wow. name, your piratey name would be. So it's just a lot of fun if you're interested. Well, Sounds, we, had our, we had our fun news earlier, and I don't know if you heard Oscar Meyer has come out with a bacon app. No. Yeah, oh, yes. It's pretty bad. But That's the reason the I mentioned it I've is you heard. have a Krispy Kreme app. Yes. Tell us about that. Um, it, 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 um, it, it, it uh, yeah, I can't even talk. It will tell you when the hot lights on. That's oh, very wow. exciting. <laughs> um, it, it also is tied to our rewards program, which is new. Okay. And so every time you come in and buy something, you earn points. It's five points for each dollar that you spend. Wow. And Terrible. you can you can exchange your points for free stuff. So, You're doomed. So over, over, <laughs> over time. So, but, um, so anyways, it, it, it's a great thing. And you can just go to the apps, the either the Google Google Play Store or the uh, Apple iTunes Store. Apple Store, yeah. That's oh, that great. sounds and great. Just type in Krispy Kreme Rewards. Well, thank you for your continued support of yeah. Talk of the Town and, and just our community, especially East Carolina. Um, again, we're live on location at Krispy Kreme. Come in here and uh, make sure you're here tomorrow, too. Talk like a pirate or dress like a pirate. And you get a surprise. So, Amanda, thank you sure, for coming thank on. You guys. It was great seeing you. Uh, Terry, we're going to have here coming up next, we're going to have Tony Castleberry on. That's right. And Tony's going to talk to us a little bit about local football and mm-hmm. East Carolina football. we got a bunch of high school games coming up. That's right. Tonight, so he's going to get into that. Tony, are you in the room somewhere? Hopefully he's going to come around the corner. <laughs> but uh, ECU is playing at Navy tomorrow. That's right. And at we 3.30. Were cr- that's right. We were cracking a little bit uh, with Mark Gettner. With WITN, he's a, he's from Kansas City. Right. And uh, I did not get to see the end of oh, that game I, last night. I did. Night. I watched it, and it but, was um, from what I've heard, because I'm home. a Denver fan. But from what I've heard, Peyton Manning drove down with uh, a very limited amount of time at the end of the game to tie it, mm-hmm. and then Kansas City fumbled the ball. They, they pick it picked up it up and, and, and scored, and it was awesome. Well, I would yeah. have loved to have seen it, but it was already 11 something before the start of the fourth <laughs> quarter. I wasn't going to make it. Tony Castleberry, man, thank you for coming on. Thanks for having me. I'm we glad got, to be uh, here. A couple things to talk about: football yeah. and football. There's a lot of stuff happening with football, both high school and ECU related, and. I gotta say, if you want me to be on the show for the first time, Krispy Kreme is an awesome place to pick. <laughs> yes. I'll come here every time. That's right. <laughs> so will I. That's the problem. I know. <laughs>
So uh, tell us, let's get into high school football. you got a lot going on. we got some pretty good teams in our area, too. Yeah, some high-scoring teams. Um, J.H. Rose and D.H. Conley in particular mm-hmm. have and put have up. Have they played each other yet? They, they have not. They play next week. Oh, All right. Always That'll a huge a game. game. Get there early for that one or you're Gosh, not going to get a big seat. weekend That's between Friday. that and I think Virginia so. Tech. Yeah, it's, it's a game. huge football weekend. Um, but both those teams score a lot of points. Defensively, they have some question marks still. Um, but when you score 50 or 60 in Rose's case, and Conley too, they've both been over 60 this year, you maybe don't worry about defense as much mm-hmm. when you can score that many points. But I think both of those coaches would like for their defenses to be a little bit better. Rose takes on a good Rocky Mount team this week. And Conley has Wes Craven, which is 3-0, oh, and yeah. averaging, I think, like 37 points a game. So um, those two teams are putting up a lot of points. And, and then they have lost still pretty strong, too, aren't they? Yeah, and Rose lost a 49-48 shootout with Havelock last oh, we week. We heard that game. Um, mm-hmm. They were right there. And one play or a, a couple plays go Rose's way, and they're undefeated instead of being 2-1 and one right now. But, um, you know, both those teams are very exciting to watch. Um, and then, you know, to – down on the other side of it, a, a little bit low, more low-scoring, more defensive-oriented teams like Farmville Central and Aiden Grifton um, still have a lot to play for. Aiden Grifton, after a slow start, has really gotten things turned around. Farmville Central has lost its quarterback to an injury. Oh. He might be back next week, but they've been kind of up and down. Um, they, they lost first week against Kinston, then won the second week, lost last week to Aiden Grifton. And they're they're hoping to you know get on track against a good Green Central team this week. Green Central's in the top ten in the state. I think they're number eight in the two A ranks. Oh, off awesome. to a great start. Um, and you know it, there's a lot of. I feel like anywhere you go in the county, you're going to find something that you like. Mm-hmm. There's there's going to be entertaining. Um, every coach in this county has done a great job. Um, Andy too. You know his first year at South Central. There they haven't won a game yet, but. They had it right there in their hands, and except for a late turnover at North Pitt last mm-hmm. week, they might have gotten their first win. So, a lot of good stuff happening there. Any of the big games tonight that you can talk about that are going to be in Greenville? I South Central um, is hosting a Hertford County team that they've had good success against recently. Yeah. Um, and anytime you're winless, that first win is the one you want the most. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And and they're they're really going to be fighting for that. I, I think that'll be a good game. But probably the game of the week in the county is going to be Wes Craven at D.H. Conley. That's right. that's shaping up to be a really good matchup. That's tonight also. That's tonight. If Conley can get its defense in order, mm-hmm. um, I feel like that could be a special season mm-hmm. for them because offensively the, the sky's the limit with them. Um, if they can quit giving up so many points in the first halves of games – I think they could really go far in the state playoffs. But that should be the best matchup of the night, West Craven at Conley. Well, that's high That'd school. Really good. we got a big one tomorrow. Yeah. At Navy. Yeah. UCU's heading up there. You know, obviously a disappointing loss, but encouraging – I hate to say encouraging loss. But no, it is. Encouraging play yeah. to go to one of the absolute most difficult environments in college football. Absolutely. Not just SEC, but the swamp itself. My yeah. sister and brother-in-law both went to U.S. Is that right? And uh, I have been to a game there before. Yeah. You know, it is literally like a 45-degree vertical. Oh, yeah. It's scary. Down. It's scary walking up the <laughs> it steps really is. there. But it is so loud and so intense. 90,000 people. Screaming at you. Yeah. Cussing at you. Yeah. And you come away with an opportunity to win and upset an SEC team. Whether, you know, it doesn't really matter is Florida top five this year or not. You are in that environment. And, they're, you know, that's a team that is hungry to get back on. You know, that's a team that's won national championships mm-hmm. and not that long ago. So they were, they're hungry to get back to that elite level of college football. And for ECU to go down there and play as well as it did to have a chance to win the game at the end, I thought they played great. And we coaches, scared them. We scared exactly. them. Exactly. There's no doubt. Real, yeah. I saw faces like this. Oh, yeah. And those <laughs> fans got it was quiet. Happening. Yeah. yeah, those fans got quiet when ECU was we rallying. Had a good contingent of fans down oh, there. Oh, always do. We did. 2,000, I think. They ECU said. fans travel no matter mm-hmm. what. That's right. It's amazing to see. Even in the, the hinterlands of Conference USA several years back, I would see ECU fans at, like, you know, basketball games mm-hmm. at 9 o'clock at SMU or wherever it might have been. Games that really didn't mean much of anything to, to even the home fans at right. SMU sometimes. And you'd see Pirate fans cheering. Right. So um, Some of the Conference USA don't have any home fans anyway. <laughs> no doubt. So that mean much. Exactly. <laughs> um, but, yeah, 
you know, Navy is is just an entirely different animal from most teams you're going to find in college football. They run the triple option. Their quarterback, Keenan Reynolds, is one of the best mm-hmm. dual threat guys in the country. Um, he's incredible. So it's it's you know, planning defensive planning for a team like that is almost impossible to simulate in practice. Coach, defensive coordinator Rick Smith said as much this week during practice. He said it's probably going to take at least two drives for his defense to get used to the speed with which Navy attacks you. So, you know, keying on Reynolds is going to be key, but they have a three, they have a, a three-headed monster in the backfield there with Chris Swain, Quentin Ezell, and Sean White. Any of those guys can hurt you. Mm-hmm. And it's not like you can just focus on, all right, we're going to shut the quarterback down, and that will kind of, you know, knock the offense yeah, off its game. To shut down. It won't. Mm-hmm. You, can, you can take Reynolds out of the game, and he'll just hand it to one of those three guys. And as if that weren't enough, they added some passing wrinkles this mm-hmm. year. Coach Smith said that, that he felt like they needed to be prepared for the pass game as well, where it used to be when you were playing Navy, you could tell your defensive line and your linebackers, all right, we're going to stop the run. That's all we have to worry about. Not so this year. They can throw it too. Hey, so what, it's, what time is the game tomorrow? It's a 3.30 kickoff. And what, um, do you know what channel it's going to be on? I think it's going to be on CBS Sports this That's week. Right. The CBS Sports Network. Yeah, and those guys do a pretty good job too. Um, I've watched some basketball games. I cover the ECU basketball beat for the Reflector. And uh, I've been able to catch some some of those SMU games that are late mm-hmm. night. I've been able to catch on mm-hmm. CBS Sports. But, yeah, it's always a great environment there. As we were talking a minute ago, ECU fans certainly will travel to Annapolis. It's not that far of a drive um, or flight if you want to fly up there. So I'm looking for it to be a great game. I really do. I, I think it's going to be close. I don't think it's going to be a blowout the way that it right. has been some, t- some years past. And it's the conference opener for each team. So they're going to be extra pumped for that. Well, I'm really glad we saw what we did in our team last week because I think that will help them. Oh, going forward, if no we doubt. Had, Absolutely, I just think it will help us at, this weekend. Yeah, and particularly with you know with Blake Kemp, the quarterback, having a great game, three hundred thirty-three right. yards, three exactly. touchdowns. Everybody hates to see the way the thing ended with the ball coming out coming out of his hand, but. I was thinking about this earlier in the no week. Hates it more than him. Exactly. That's right. And he's been throwing a football probably his entire life. How many times has that happened? Oh, I know. Maybe f- yeah. three. That's right. And it just so happened that it was on that stage. But you know, you got to put that behind you. Focus on the positives that you did at Florida, and take that game plan up to up to Navy, and you know, see what That's happens. That's right. It's well, exciting. thank you, man. That is awesome. That's a great yeah. update. It's um, wonderful. Again, we're live at Krispy Kreme. If you haven't had a chance to get by here, the hot light is still on. We'll be <laughs> on for. Another, Another hour, hour, and I plan on yeah. hitting it in about 10, 15 minutes. So you better get here before then. But, uh, Tony, thank you for coming on. Thanks it for having me. Great update on yes, football. Appreciate Make it. Make sure to tune in to the game, 94.3. And uh, also, 103.7. Don't they have some games uh, on this? Yeah, episode? yeah. There's, I mean, on Saturdays in this town, you can catch a college football game on a lot of That's stages. Right. And it's go. great. <laughs> it's awesome. Yes. That's wonderful. Thank you for Thanks coming for on. Having We're going to again take our, next, our last break before the – the top of the hour is final right. break, so we'll do that. We'll be back in a couple minutes to wrap up the show, so we'll be back in a couple. Welcome back to September 18th. This is beautiful Friday morning. The fog, fog has lifted. Has lifted. <laughs> Quick weather report, isolated showers after 2 p.m. today. Um, otherwise, mostly sunny with a high near 83. Chance of precipitation at 20%. Tonight, low of 63. Tomorrow, mostly sunny with a high of 68, low of 65. Sunday, Sunday is also going to be sunny on Sunday <laughs> with a high of 87, low of 64. And Monday is going to be partly sunny with a high near 83. Yeah. But the most beautiful weather is sitting where we are sitting right now. Terry. Right. Well, it's going to be good weather tonight for the Rose game on 94.3. Be the sure to game. listen to it. It's in Rocky Mount. So That's right. You can certainly drive over to Rocky Mount and watch the game, but you can listen to That's it right. on the radio, 94.3 but tonight. But what I was referring to weather-wise was that hot light sitting I right know, there. I know. I see it. The sun is shining in the window. So, again, we the are live on, on. Uh, <laughs> location at Krispy Kreme. Uh, just as a reminder, if you haven't heard it, um, starting midnight tonight all the way through tomorrow night, it is Talk Like a Pirate Day. Come in, Talk Like a Pirate, and you get a free donut. That's right. If you dress like a pirate with at least three items that are pirate, this is not ECU pirates. It actually has to look a like a pirate. pirate. You get a free dozen donuts. And uh, Amanda Tilly was on a few minutes ago. They've got some really cool seasonal donuts, pumpkin yeah, spice. They do. Ooh, so and good. salted caramel latte. Mm. <laughs> yeah, they're doing That's a lot bad. to promote the special designed donuts and cream puffs and on then, yeah, football weekends. That's right. Well, she'll have the pirate donut tomorrow. That's right. But then on the football weekend, she'll have the pirate and the football. That's right. So uh, she's a local proprietor, got a couple locations outside of town, but this is where her home is, and uh, make sure you support that. 
We had a cool show today. We We've have had some a great lot guests. of great guests today, giving us so much information. Yep, we have Bianca Shoneman talking about mm -hmm. the, the great things going on in Uptown Greenville. We've we've had uh, John Ross with Metrics and Maine Pharmaceuticals right. giving updates on all the new hires that they've had. He was on at the 7:30 hour, mm -hmm. and then uh, Tony Castleberry just giving us right. a great update, and then Mike Broadwell Mike with Broadwell. Greenville Police Department. So that was Lots, a lot going on in our city. We're very fortunate. Lot. Yeah, there is a lot. Yeah, it's um, great. One thing, Terry, uh, that Tim Henry wanted me to mention is on Tuesday, Speaker of the House Tim Moore will join Henry on Talk of the Town to talk about the new state budget that was just done. Uh, so that will be again Tuesday morning. Uh, that was finally passed yesterday after a disastrous two and a half months of negotiating between wait. two of the two groups of the same party. Well, and I think it really put the um, the school systems in uh, in jeopardy of not being able to really get the instruction started like they wanted to and plan for the year without the teacher assistants in place. And so many of the teacher assistants lost their jobs like 24 hours before school started. Yeah. You know, so now I hope that's all back on track and people can well, move forward with a good well, positive the school the positive year. The positive is that it's a two-year budget. Right. So uh, we don't have to worry about this next summer. No, but I um, hope they'll sit down and figure out what they're going to do before the two years is up. Well, it's that, <laughs> and, and if the Republicans are still in charge, and, right. and they're hurting themselves by doing That's this. That's exactly right. Uh, but if they're still in charge, and, and, and the Governor uh, McCrory is elected uh, next November, mm -hmm. again, they need to make sure going in that 2017 long session right. that they are on the same page and start working together. And they're going to have a short-lived uh, reign as, as controlling party. I mean, and that we've heard, obviously, so much publicly about teacher assistance and various items like hot button items from the budget but there's a whole lot of other things that need to be considered in the budget and figured out before it comes around and we have to wait for the next budget well one thing i was pleased about with the budget i believe i read in the paper there's a 400 million dollars and it was primarily added towards education right and so it was good to see that it That's was right. good to see the community colleges uh, get some money the university systems Mm -hmm. getting additional funds because they have gone through year after year after year of cuts right and um to, to see that was good the teacher assistant line item again that's going to be uh you're going to hear the groups that were complaining about losing teacher assistance now mm -hmm. complaining mm -hmm. because How their, they their money the was never <laughs> intended to be used for teacher assistance right. so a little high hypocritical there but, but uh, that could turn out to be a positive too they'll I get think more it will be. assistance I mean, in, Pitt in county the is one of the counties that does mm -hmm. use that money for right. what they're supposed to use it that's for. that's right well, so That's what are the great. other items? Uh, I missed the debate the other night. I only I saw about an hour of it. Oh, gosh. What, what, what do you think? I got to watch some of it, but it just makes me too nervous. But actually, we have some very smart, very intelligent people. But nobody ever uh, said anything. I will have to say, except for, I liked Carly Fiorina's closing argument. Right. I thought that she was really good. She did a good really job. Good. And, and, you know, she you grab your heart when they start talking about drugs. Right. And to hear her say, you know, I lost a child to drugs. That's drug. right. She, out of anyone up there, can speak more from That's a personal right. level. Exactly. Having to go through mm -hmm. what she went through. And I enjoyed hearing uh, Marco Rubio talk farm policy. He knows his stuff about that. He does that know his stuff. He's he very well spoken, very polished. Mm -hmm. I'm actually surprised he's not higher in the polls. Right, I am too. I like Mike Huckabee. I mean, I've yeah, always I liked Mike too. Huckabee. I but think they all had great personal. points that they made that are just all so important to what's happening to our country. So did the Donald say anything to wow you? <laughs> no, I think he just kind of held his own, I guess. Held his own. <laughs> Well, you're right. There are some good ones. Uh, John Kasich, Ted Cruz. I mean, all, all of all of them said Very good something people. there. Um, that, that's going to be interesting to see how that whittles down. Yeah, as well, and in two weeks we'll have the Democrat uh, r debate start. I think it's in about two weeks, so we'll I mean, see how that, that does compares. Joe, did Joe Biden ever decide to get in? I don't in? think not yet that I've not heard. No, maybe be breaking news this weekend or something. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, Bernie Sanders has has really made a lot of noise. He's yes, taken he some of Hillary's steam away and. She's got, a, she's got a mess on her hands yeah, with all does. of this uh, controversy surrounding she her. She sure does. She's going to have to figure it out. But that's in about two weeks. I heard that on the news this morning. Well, I believe on CNN, I think. Probably just to wrap our show up, we've got two sure. or three minutes left. Uh, again, if you're interested in hearing about the local politics, we are only, what, six weeks it's away It's really from coming fast. It, Seven weeks away, yeah. maybe. A lot of forums. I know there's one tomorrow. I don't know where it that's is. The but City Council Chambers. It's at, that's right. City Council Chambers is a forum tomorrow. I think it's at 10 o'clock in the mm -hmm. morning. So if you get a chance to go to any of the forums whenever you can, um, you need to try to attend and ask your local politicians what's going on and what and they've accomplished. don't be scared to ask some tough questions. Right. I mean, if you're in the position, you've got to be willing to accept think, the questions. I think the number one issue right now is why have we had so many tax and fee increases in the last, since 2014 and some still coming up and find out from them why do they see that that's the best way to increase revenue is to um, increase our taxes rather than go through our budget and find out where we might can save some money that way. Well, and 
considering who we've we've had on, we've had uh, there are two factions on our city council, mm-hmm. and that's been one of the frustrating right. things we've we've noticed. Uh, really, it's been the last three and a half years that's right. that we've dealt with this. And and uh, two years ago, uh, there was a lot of, of on one side, the, which was the underside at the time, mm-hmm. saying, "Oh, this is a four vote block, and right. this isn't fair." Now we have well, it on the other side. Now we have side. a four vote block going the other way, and that's it's interesting. Right. I asked uh, two of the people that are part of that four mm-hmm. vote block, the group of four is what I call them, right. Neither one of them denied no, being they a part didn't. of it. Of course, Calvin said it was a loose Loosely, group, but yeah. I, I don't see it as a loose group. <laughs> well, and I think really, and he, Calvin did say something that's right. Most of the votes, most of the votes on city council are fairly unanimous. Right. But it's really when you get into yeah. your controversial that's items, right. that's where it gets split, and, the, and you see that 4-2. And, and right. you've got to decide, I mean, that we don't need that as a city. We need a unified government. That's right. Um, and we need a government. We, we need a group of people. We don't who really are, see anything come out of the council, though, that really t- states where the vision's going and what do they have. It. What are their plans for our future? Well, we we have heard their plans. Quality of life. I agree with but quality of life. That's really vague. We need economic development, and then we'll have all the quality of life that we need. Yeah, yeah. But you've got to have the money to invest in in the infrastructure to have everything that you want to have to, right. to bring the quality of life up. Right. There's nobody. You'd be crazy or you are crazy if you're going to get up there and say, I don't care about quality of life. Of course we care. Everyone cares Everybody about that. Does. But That's in right. order to pay for it, you've got to have revenue. And you cannot do that through tax increases. You've got to have it by job base, which job is why growth. Maine and the announcement that they had oh, yeah. had nothing it's, to do with big. our city council. No. This had to do with a company with people with vision that came in and are investing in our community. That's right. So, uh, exactly right. you know, again, we're live location, Krispy Kreme. We're about to wrap the show up, but get down here. The light is still on for at least another hour. Talk like a pirate day is tomorrow. Yeah, be a lot of fun. Make sure you bring in uh, your voice. Talk like a pirate. Get a free donut. How do you bring talk in like your a pirate? clothes. <laughs> and uh, Bianca talked like a pirate. She did. I can't do it. She did. <laughs> but bring your uh, clothes in here. At least three items that look like a pirate. You get a free dozen. That's right. So Amanda Tilly has done a great job, and you can get some of the seasonal donuts that they have with the pirate donut and and the uh, football donut on the weekends as well as a caramel a salted caramel latte and pumpkin spice we're about to wrap the show up thank you so much for joining in again Krispy Kreme get down here it's been a great morning and uh Henry thank you for the opportunity for Terry and I a to, lot of fun. to be able to be on the show so till to uh, Monday we'll see you next week on talk of the town have a good weekend folks